Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are continuing with our Cannon Blast complete game series in Unity 3D. Now for this video we are going to be implementing the scoring into our game and if we have enough time after implementing that we are going to create a follow camera for our cannonball. Okay so let's get started. Now we actually need to create a few tags because we are going to be checking which tag we are colliding with in order to add our differing point values. So let's go ahead and add those tags now. To add a tag all I have to do is click on an object go to tag click add tag and as you can see I went ahead and tested this out a little bit so I've got a couple of removed here but you won't have those so let's go ahead and click the plus icon here and I'm just gonna create three new tags I'm gonna create one for our green target one for our yellow target and a final one for our red target. Now it is important that we use the same naming convention for each of these tags because we're going to have to reference these in script it just makes it a lot easier if we have them named the same way. Okay now let's actually click on an object down there and move down to it and let's go ahead and tag these objects. So I'm just going to click on it so now we're on the red one so I'm just gonna give it the red target click on the yellow one and we're gonna give it yellow target click on the green one and we're gonna give it our green target now as you can see here our game objects also have just a base name of cylinder well I don't really like that either so we're gonna go ahead and change this as well to our green target the yellow one to our yellow target and the red one to our red target another update we actually have to make to these game objects is that if you look at the game objects right now we don't actually have a collider added onto these game objects but what we can do is actually select all three go to add component and we can just go to physics and if you look in physics we don't actually have a cylinder collider available here but we can use a mesh collider and if we set it to convex we can now see that the collider is showing up for us and if we look at the mesh we can also see that it's refer referencing a cylinder here so very cool again if I go underneath it we can see that it's just very well wrapping to our current cylinders which is very good now the last update I actually want to make here is if we go up above our objects a little bit and look down at them we can see that our green target has a lot of yellow space around it but our red target does not so basically what this means is that it's going to be harder to hit the red target than just about any other target available here so what I actually want to do is increase the scale of my red target. If we click on our, on our green target, we can see that the scale in the X and Z is at 1.5, and the scale on our yellow target is at 3 in the X and Z. So let's just click on our red target here. As we can see, it's set to 4 in the X and Z, but again, our yellow target is 3, and we just cut that in half for our green target. So I'm going to again increase this up to a value of 6 in the X and Z, and so now we have a really big red target, so that way we can hit this fairly easily. So that is actually going to do it for the scene updates that we need to make. Let's go ahead and save that. It's important to continuously save your work. Let's go to our project and our scripts folder here. I already have it open. And we're gonna go ahead and open up our Cannonball script. And we're gonna create a new script. We're gonna create a C Sharp script here that we can just call our Game Manager script. And this script is going to be used to manage a lot more than just scoring. We're basically going to put several public functions inside of this script that will be used to manipulate several different objects in our scene, including like the score UI object, some cameras a little later on. Basically, we are going to use this to just manage multiple things rather than having a whole bunch of scripts to manage really small functions. So let's go ahead and open up this file as well and we're actually going to start scripting inside of our game manager. We don't need a start and update function for this script but we are going to need several variables up at the top. So we're going to need a public float that we can call our red score and we can just set this to an initial value of like one. Copy that. Paste it twice and now we can actually change this to yellow and green. Just change up the values a little bit. So I'm going to set my yellow to 5 and my green to 10. We are also going to need a reference for our text UI object. So let's go ahead and create that reference here. We're going to create a public text that we can just call our score text here. And we're going to create another float for our score. So I'm just going to say public float score. Since we're using text here though, we do have to add a using statement up top. So we're going to say we are using unityengine.ui. That's really important because if we don't have that, then this script will throw an error. Now underneath our variables, we are just going to create three really simple functions now. And actually what I'm going to do is create the first one and then copy it and fill in the other two because basically all it's going to do is increase our score value and then update the text object as well. So let's go ahead and script out the first one. It's just going to be a public void and we can just call this our green 
target hit function. And all we want to do here is increase our score. So our score is plus equal to our green score. And actually up here, where the score is referenced, I'm just gonna set this equal to a value of zero. And we can actually make this a private variable because right now we don't actually need to access this anywhere else. And the last thing I actually need to do inside of this green target hit function is update the text in my score text reference. So I'm just gonna say my score text dot text, lowercase t, is equal to a string of score colon space plus our score. Okay, cool, now let's go ahead and actually copy this and we can just paste it twice. And all we have to do here is change, whoops, make sure you're changing the right functions. We're gonna change the second one to yellow and yellow and the last one to red and red. Okay, now let's go ahead and save that. Let's go back out to our scene just to make sure we don't have any errors. We don't, we've got a warning that's coming from a different script, but that's okay. And now let's move over to our cannonball script. We actually have to make a couple of updates here, but again, it won't take too long to do these updates. Now, the first thing we actually wanna do here is create a private reference for our game manager. So all we have to do here is say game manager, game manager. Now inside of our start function, we are actually going to find the game manager in our scene. So all we have to do here is say game manager is equal to we're gonna typecast as game manager, and then we're just gonna do a find object of type. Be sure to get uppercases correct on this one. If you don't, it'll actually mess up for you, but if you just read that out, it should make a little sense, and we're gonna make sure we say type of game manager. And that's all we need to do in our start function. Very simple, all we're gonna do is make sure that we are finding our game manager. Now, another thing that I actually wanna do is update the name of this destroy function. And I'm updating this because we got several questions from coders in the community about calling this destroy, about whether it would conflict with the unity destroy method and it will not conflict because this is being derived from our cannonball class. So this won't actually cause a conflict for us, but I don't really want there to be in conf any confusion moving forward. So we're just going to change this to be our cannonball destroy function. And I can just very easily copy that and paste it. And now that function should work. Now actually underneath this function, I'm going to create a void on collision enter. And we're gonna need a collision here, just call that col. And basically what we want to do inside of this function is actually check our coals tag. And if it's actually equal to one of our targets tags, then we want to call the function in our game manager script. So let's go ahead and set up an if check. We're gonna say if col.gameObject.tag is equal to our green target. And this is is where using the same naming convention for our tags really comes in handy because we know what we called those and we know the first letter of each word is actually going to be capitalized. So it's really easy to just sort of repeat this. Now what we actually wanna do is reference our game manager dot green target hit function. Make sure that that name is the same thing. Green target hit, very cool. And now we can actually call our cannonball destroy function here. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually copy this just to make it easy on us. And what we can do is actually just change this very quickly to yellow and to yellow. And finally, we're gonna change this to red and to red. Now let's go ahead and save that, go back out to our scene. Now we do actually have to do a few things before we can test this, so let's go to our project here. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a new, create an empty object here that we can just call our game manager. I'm gonna zero out the position here, you don't have to. I just like, you know, for it to be at zero, zero, zero. It doesn't make sense for it to really be at some random position, but again, you don't necessarily have to do that because the only thing that's gonna go on this object is our game manager script. And inside of our game manager script, we actually have to add a reference to our text. And if you don't see your text, it's actually underneath your canvas and you can just drag it in. And you can actually change the name of this as well to score, just to make it a little easier to know what you're actually dragging in. And obviously when we update the name there, it updates here as well. Okay, now we should be able to actually test. So let's go ahead and press the play button. And if you remember in our last video, I actually set up my cannon to be fired based on the sliders value and pressing this fire button here. So let's go ahead and increase our slider a little bit, aim up our cannon and fire. Okay, so it looks like we hit the red target there. Let's aim up a little bit higher, see if we can't get an arc to the green. Awesome, so we hit the green that time, very cool. Now let's see if we can't hit yellow. It's a little bit in between, so the yellow's a little harder to hit. <laughs> hit the red again. 
and it's a little harder to play test this right now. Okay, that time I got it. Actually, it hit the red and the yellow. So that's something that we are going to fix a little bit later on because right now, if you hit like right on the edge between the red and yellow or the yellow and green, it will actually award points for both. But we are gonna fix that a little bit later on. For right now, I just wanna make sure that this is actually working and updating our score. As we can see, it is updating the score text and we are getting the appropriate values. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop that. And unfortunately, coders, I have run out of time for this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I don't wanna extend this tutorial beyond 20 minutes because at that point it can be really hard to actually watch the tutorial and understand everything that we're doing. So in our next video, we are going to enable the follow camera for our cannonball. So right now we just sort of launch a cannonball and it moves away from our cannon, which works, but it's not as pretty as it could be. We could definitely make that cooler and more dynamic. So basically what we are going to do is add in a new camera into our scene and initially set that to inactive. Then when we fire our cannon, we will deactivate our main camera and activate the follow camera, which will follow our cannonball all the way down until it collides, and then it will be deactivated, and our main camera will be activated again, and we'll, we will also have to reset the position of our follow camera, because if we don't reset it, then we can get some weird behavior where it's starting its position down at the end, moving towards, and then following. So definitely be sure to check out that next video, and I look forward to seeing all of you coders in that next video as well. Okay coders, I hope that you enjoyed that video. We are constantly adding new videos here on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It allows us to continue making great content for you coders. And if you are feeling extremely generous, please check out our Patreon account. Here are a few of our other tutorials just in case you want to keep on learning. If you become a patron of Renaissance Coders, you can get access to our source code and our project files as well. Okay coders, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.